Well, hey, happy Friday. We're on a Friday instead of a Thursday. Welcome to the Speak with Presence podcast, where perfection is overrated. Leaders listen, and we all speak up to influence change. I'm Jen Valenga. And I'm Jennifer Retley thomas The great news is, is we are, as you know, co-host of the Speak with Present podcast and co-founders of Voice First World. So we're thrilled to have you here today. We are. And today I'm really excited when we talked about JRT starting the Speak with Presence podcast. I think you remember one of when we were going through our list of powerful (laughs) women that we know. I said, I know someone in Miami that I knew from my early days, Maria Borges. She's amazing. She's the vice president of global consumer products and optimization economics at MasterCard. She used to be at Visa. 20 years of global experience. And you know how it goes. I used to live in Miami. We were friends because our little boys who are now in college, our little boys were besties in kindergarten and first grade. And you understand some of the powerful working things that they're doing. But I moved away and we didn't connect as much over the years. But you see these Facebook posts and she's traveling all over the world, truly a global leader and reaching different milestones in her own career. And she's had to overcome some bias like all of us. She's incredible. And our pre-call with her helped us understand what an impact she is making in the lives of so many women, not only her all her own daughter, but also young women in the workplace. JRT, do you have anything to add in terms of getting to know her a little bit on our pre-call? No, I just think she's been on an amazing journey and her journey is different than other people's journey. And it's really important. I think the whole purpose of our podcast is for people to understand that there are many ways and there are many struggles and there are many stories But it's so exciting to see after visiting with Maria, the impact she's had, the work that she's done. And I think the key part in what you just said is, is how she's modeling the way for many women that may be starting their career or they're even younger than that of what is possible. So I'm excited to meet and interview her today. Oh, yeah, for sure. And one of the things that she's very recently engaged in is she's a board member at the Florida Justice Institute, which is a nonprofit organization. I think she'll talk about that a little bit. But in light of us talking with United We and Wendy Doyle, the CEO there, talking about the appointments project, the fact that Maria has stepped into that kind of leadership on a board is really inspiring for all of us. So without any further ado, let's bring Maria on right now. Hey, Maria. Hello. So good to see you. It's nice to see you as well. Thanks for the opportunity to to share my story. Yes, absolutely. So where are you coming from today? Uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, Nice, sunny, warm, kind of humid uh, compared to the rest of the U.S. The world. <laughs> just I remember the those northern days. part, yes. <laughs> it's been a long time since I had those hot and humid days the way Miami has. So when you think about the journey of your career and the kids, you have three beautiful, smart, just engaged children. You think about being a mom and a business leader. I'm jumping right in, but... Y- Give us a little something about where you are right now and what you had to do to get there. Okay. So as you mentioned, I'm with MasterCard, great organization. Uh, I've been in the payment industry for about 20 plus years, kind of giving my age away there. Um, and with, with Visa previously, started off um, always in the finance and internal audits. A local accounting firm, worked for multiple uh, banks, local banks. Um And from there, like when we talk about, um, and I'll just jump right in. When we talk about bias um, and you think back historically to the many years, uh, it wasn't as evident what was taking place. But as, as, you know, when you think now forward and I look back, it's, yeah, there was some, you know, gender bias and and some of them were very obvious. Um, I picked, you know, a, a very male dominant industry, not knowing until one day I woke up, it's like, 
there's a lot of men in the conference room and just it just became more and more obvious um, but with my travel um, it's interesting um, and it all depends you know on the culture of the country you see it more often than not um, there are several countries and, and even states within the US that you see it's it, they they're um, you see the change you know where they're allowing you see more women at the VP and above level um, so the change is good and we could talk about later how I get into the uh, the board member position and what drove me to that. Um, but yeah, so accounting background, finance operation, a lot of audits, a lot of details. Um, you know, payments industry is fascinating. Um, you learn a lot, uh, but there are still very male dominant. Uh, you know. And you've got, you know, you've got the males that recognize it and, the, and, the, and those that I just continue being their ways. Do you feel like you've had some allies along the way, male allies who have um, promoted you and lifted you up as you've built your way into higher levels of leadership? I do. Um, I think some of them are just, I'm a very transparent, you know, direct, honest person. And I respect that more. Um, and I do like that from working with men, the ones that are, it's just black and white, you know, and, and you kind of know they're not going to directly tell you you're not experienced enough, you're a female, and so I'm not going to bring you onto this position, or, or what I was told, uh, I don't have time to train you, so I'm not giving you the opportunity, um, or you're too emotional in the way that you express yourself, so I'm not giving you the opportunity, you have to kind of read between the lines, but then you've got others that are um, direct from a business perspective, and those are the ones that really um, make you look at yourself honestly and say, okay, what is that skill that I need to have in order to improve? Um, and I, I rather that than the ones that sugarcoat things are, are not direct enough uh, to say why you didn't get, you know, the, the, the position. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pause for a second, JRT, because we have a Facebook user that's saying, thanks for sharing stories from women leaders. And so I like, if you're watching and you want to put a comment up there, we are seeing them. We're continuing with the interview, but we're happy to take any questions or see your comments. So thank you so much for that comment. It's really important to hear from leaders because it's it can be really lonely at the top. Do you feel that that's the case, Maria? Are, you, are there ways in which you have found yourself lonely in your leadership position? Um, at times, yes. And, and I can relate back to some of the, in order to prepare for this interview, I watched some of your prior interviews, which I thought were fascinating. Um, I think it was Colette who spoke about being lonely when she went out to China. Um, and, and yes, that I, I related to her story where at times I find myself, how do I address this problem? And being remote is even worse, right? Because at least when you're in the office, you can get up and kind of talk and you meet others. Remote, you have to by chance, get invited to a meeting, meet someone else, and then they kind of lead you to another contact. But remote is you have to put more effort, whether male or female, um, you have to put more effort to continue that networking. Um, the loneliness or being alone, not loneliness, but being alone and trying to figure things out on my own. Yes, it's it's there. But I think that's for male or females. Um, I, I think you just have to find that network you know, where you have those support people and, and uh, some are willing to help. And then I've met other managers, male and female, that just from a security perspective, they keep all the information in and they're not willing to help. Um, and that's not my style at all. Like, I, I think you're as strong as your team. Uh, so I want them to learn everything that I know so then I can delegate and move on to do other things. Uh, but that applies to male and females. You, you reach, you see both. And even, I think I shared the story with you, you know, just because females become executives at high levels, it doesn't mean that they're always willing to support other females, which I wish they would. But I kind of sit back instead of criticizing them, think, well, why? why? What's holding them back from, from helping out? Right. And I'm assuming that it's just the struggle that it took for them to get there because we know that there aren't many um, you know, at, at the executive's level. Yeah. When you think about, you, you know, you mentioned you, you've made, you've experienced it, you've seen bias in the workplace. When you think about some of those things, do you have a piece of advice for younger women on how they may get through some of those moments like you've witnessed in the past? I think first not to be naive, as Colette said, you know, 
understand the industry that you're going into. There are industries that are more female. There are more industries that are male. There are more industries that are balanced. Actually, probably aren't that many that are balanced. Um, I think first have the reality of the industry that you're going in. And second, at least my advice, because I do mentor different um, co-workers, you know, usually they tend to be younger. Uh, there was one that was struggling often. And, uh, and I told you, you need to start, unfortunately, thinking like a man, you know, get the emotions out, get the drama out, and just be objective on what is it that you're trying to drive, whatever that conversation or that changes. Um, I think planning uh, as well, not, you know, I didn't plan my career. I got into accounting and then I went into banking and then I went into internal audit and I realized I'm great in financial operations. And I kind of think back, well, maybe I should have planned, you know, what is it? Do explore, you know, the, the different uh, areas in finance that I want to. So I do recommend that. Um, I think that our young ladies are much more prepared now because of all the learnings from, you know, the moms and all of their friends. Every, the, we've led the way. Um, the other advice I give is take the chance, take the risk. I had a, a young lady I was mentoring who said she wanted a new position. So I said, well, have you looked at postings, you know, job postings? No. Okay, well, that's the first step. You need to, no one's going to come come and knock on your door. And that's one thing MasterCard promotes is, you know, own your career. And so you need to, uh, maybe historically, your manager would say, oh, you know, think about this position. And there are still um, many uh, employees that I hear of that got tapped on the shoulder for a position. I think that tends to be, though, in the smaller numbers, the, you know, the majority of us are, you've got to fight, you've got to look for that next step. So I think uh, own your career. Um, when you're dealing with the males, you know, they take the drama out, take the emotions out and kind of be objective. Um, not to change who you are, because I know women are different than men. It's just how, how it is. Uh, but try to, um, not to fit in, get your point across more. What is the word, the term that they use? Um, the intellectual, um, emotional, uh, what is it? Intelligence, more, emotional in intelligence. Yeah, emotional intelligence, right, right. Yeah. And I think that's something that good or bad, uh, whether in the workplace or in anywhere part of your of your life, it's good to have like control of that. Um, so I, I think that's good. Uh, I would advise, you know, that as well. It's so funny, Maria, because I'm doing these <laughs> JRT, if you've not been paying attention, JRT challenged me to 347 stories, only not 365 because we didn't think of it until <laughs> some days were already gone. But the story that I'm posting today that I did early this morning, it talks about emotional intelligence and the importance of self-awareness and all of that. The way I would say it, and I want to know your opinion on this, is, is how you frame your story around your career. Because I think women sometimes look back and they go, well, I don't really have it. It's like, no, you have to frame your story of where you've gotten. I just talking to Colette about what it took to get to Nike. This was actually after we turned the mics off, as so often happens. <laughs> and she was saying Nike needs to know your story, your story of athleticism, even if it's not you personally, your story of sports. That's what they want to know. So do you. Do, what do you think of that idea of the story of your career? Does that resonate with you? It, it doesn't. Everyone has a story. Um, I've never thought about framing it or, or of my story of my career. I think I, uh, I think it was, um, and you just mentioned her name, and I'm terrible with names. The the uh, uh, the lady who is who is the um, airline pilot, Courtney, Courtney, Courtney Shock, yeah, right. Courtney, how she said, where you just have to keep fighting for what you want, and and I had to go through that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I took a chance. And I think that's the other thing too, is like, I took the risk. My, I'm, a, I'm from Argentina. So immigrant from Argentina, parents came to the U S when I was two, I thank my mother every day for the decision to bring our family here. I mean, there's nothing like the opportunities in the U S um, you know, but being a female and being um, a, a minority doesn't help, uh, you know, for chances or, or just to get equal, opportunity sometimes you really have to fight for what you want um and my story i think is just i'm a, a hard worker i'll deliver um i may not be as polished as others but i'm just as intelligent and you know i i'll deliver and and that's what the executive who finally gave me the chance to you know to move on to the vp position um you know said okay she delivers i delivered a 
ton of revenue for them two years and and he accepted that but it took a change it was interesting he's an, an a great executive um very business very fair from that perspective i had a, a male manager really nice guy um but i wasn't getting that growth that i needed and i was you know running a global audit team across the regions meeting with customers that's why i was doing all that traveling and then i had a, a change to a female uh leader and she was like you know why are you still here like why are you still at this in this role and so she helped me she took the time to learn about my knowledge my skill what i brought to the table and then went back to our executive and said yeah she's ready so unless I had that support, I couldn't move on to that next role. And I understand they need to make sure that whoever we're promoting at these levels are, are capable and are ready. Um, so I don't know, frame my story in a couple of words. I guess we'll have to practice that. I'll have to practice it. <laughs> we can always practice our stories. That's really awesome, though, that she is. Are she somebody you're still working with, Maria? Yes. Yeah, actually, we yeah. have monthly catch up calls. Really nice. Uh, lady, I actually went to because I thought about moving up north to Connecticut because that's where mm -hmm. our corporate office is in northern New York. And so I went up with Andres, my youngest son, and I connected with her. We met, I met, had dinner with her and her two kids. Uh, so she's really a, a fabulous person. That's so good to hear that kind of support and advancement from others on your team. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't have seen it for yourself. I love that. Yeah, yeah, or I would have left you know, after a while of getting the nose, 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 it's like, all right, I got to try somewhere else. Um, yep. so, so that would have happened too. But what I also like about her, didn't see it as a threat, right? Unfortunately, right. whether male or female, sometimes you meet individuals that if you're trying to promote yourself to their level, sometimes that can be a threat that whole job security. Um, so I was happy enough that I, that I got a chance to meet her, that God put her on my path. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, thinking about and thinking about what Jen just asked you about story, I'm going to ask you the question of, can you think of a time over the last 20 years where you really felt like you were a powerful speaker? And when you were thinking about that time, what do you believe, what actions did you take to be that powerful speaker? So there's one particular um, time that I that always stands out in my mind. Um, so I've, I worked for different regions within MasterCard and I was doing audits as I explained. And when we do audits, you're, you know, you're, you're identifying problems. And I had to present to the board of directors of this particular region, which were about 10 to 12 individuals, um, primarily men, one female, um, and the president of the board was there. And we were talking about this particular problem. Um, and after I finished presenting my case, everyone started, oh, they have their own opinions, having all these different one-off conversations. And I couldn't get my voice across because now they're all speaking. But I made eye contact with the president. And it's your traditional long table. He's sitting at the other end. I'm standing <laughs> on one end. And we continued the conversation. And he understood what I was explaining because that's one of the, I guess, um, concerns I always have. Am I explaining myself well enough? Am I going through too many details? I'm a visual learner. And so for me, I need to see that flow chart of, you know, whatever it is. I, it can't just be, you know, just words. But I, I knew I was confident enough, I guess, in what I was. No, I, I know that I was confident enough of what I was explaining and I was certain enough of what I was explaining that my message got across to that highest level and he understood. Um, many times our executives and in, in most companies don't get into the details, right? So they may not know how things work, they just know that it works, but he understood <laughs> enough. Uh, and, and so but to me, that was powerful. Um, when you- that help, Oh, sorry. No, I was gonna say, when you caught his eye, what did you read off of him? He was looking at me. Like, you know, like he wanted to continue the conversation. Yes. yes. Like he, uh, so, so I was happy about that. Yeah. Did I interrupt you? Were you about to say something? Yes, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> <laughs> JRT, you go. <laughs> That's my world, girl. That's my world. Um, so when you think about the importance of speaking in the workplace and you think about 
all the opportunities that you have for mentoring <laughs> young women, what is your advice to them in helping them, like in your words, say, being authentic, being comfortable to use your voice, being comfortable to take risk? How do you, how do you help those young women embrace that? and understand the importance of it. So everyone, I mean, each person that I've mentored has a different story, right? Mm -hmm. They're at a different, they're trying to solve a different problem, right? And they're coming to you to, what what experience do you have that you can share to kind of give me these tips to move along? Um, so, so it all depends. Um, I think in most of them, they, um, yeah, they're all, they all tend to be younger, um, had a few male as well. Uh, mentors as well. Um, but I do always tell them that if you're certain of something, you need to speak up. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm one of those, like I think Colette had mentioned, where she, she was afraid of or she was nervous of, of presenting or speaking up. Sometimes I find myself, you know, in that same exact situation. Um, and with them, I tell them, you just take the chance. As long as you're certain of what you're saying, obviously, you don't want to, you know, or you can, you know, you can um, reframe it as, it's something I'm investigating and it's something that I need to look into. Um, but don't be afraid to, you know, to try many times others may have the same question and, and they're not, you know, they're not raising their hands. Um, but with my mentors, it's usually take the risk, go after, you know, don't think short term, think long term. So if, if you're in a, like there's a young lady that I'm mentoring, she just got a promotion. She's mm -hmm. a junior. Um, but she shouldn't stay in her role more than three years, which was a lot of the mistakes that I made. I stayed nine years in my eight years in my prior role. So I kept, they kept giving me, they kept giving me more responsibilities, changing the responsibilities, but you know, the title wouldn't change. And I would look at the other individuals that would, you know, move on to other positions or other roles or get promoted, whether male or female. And they did their own. Like I had one manager tell me he did his own management trainee uh, uh, program. He did it himself. He just, okay, two years here, two years here, did two years here. Uh, and that's, I think, part of um, taking your career into your own hands, you know, having that plan, thinking about, okay, I'll stay here three years, which is a, a good amount of time that you learn, you get that experience, and then move on to that next role. Um, so I do share that with the, with the uh, people that I mentor, um, speaking up, not staying in a role for too long, taking, you know, exploring other, other possibilities within the company, within the industry. Um, what else? Um, what do you tell your daughter, Maria? I share all of this with her. Actually, yeah. she did a paper. She left, you know, name, the name of my company companies out where I worked, but she spoke about, she did a paper on uh, a lot of the bias set that I would share with her. Um, but the boys and girls, my sons, I have two, you know, wonderful sons and, what I, because at work we have this program called Girls for Tech, right? Because in our country we have this lack of number of girls that are in the technology. And I was thinking about that this morning. I had, I've had to interview uh, people in India because we have a big tech hub here there, as many companies do. And there you don't see that gender bias. Male and female, they have the same, you know, schooling, technology background, experience. And we've got a lot of um, executive females that come from, from India. And so it's like, what's the difference? Like that country realized it, it can't, we can't just dominate just the men, both men and women need to learn the same, have the same opportunities for learning. Um, so uh, so at, anyways, when I, when I was doing interviews there, I saw I had equally number of, of applicants, mm -hmm. male and females on the technology side. But my point was about the boys where, you know, we do this, these, this program, which is great, girls for tech. But what I could get concerned about is do we now begin to drive that, that resentfulness from the boys? Like we had a group of girls that came to our program, but the boys stayed at school. It's like, so how do we bring it together? How do we get the, the, the young boys that are going to eventually be the executive men and the executive women to, to look at both being fair? Um, because they can <laughs> learn from each other. Yeah, right. they, they yeah. can absolutely learn from each other. It's interesting. I, I was just reminded of 
when my son was at school in Surfside, where we both were, and in his classroom, the students who had Spanish speaking or from Spanish speaking homes were sent to a classroom. JRT knows the story. Were sent to a classroom to work on Spanish because their home life, in their home life, they spoke it. <clears throat> and my son didn't speak Spanish. And I said, uh, so what he was doing instead was just kind of playing on the computer until those kids got back. And in the, in that school, he was usually the minority. And so I spoke to the school and I said, I'd like my son to go to the Spanish classes. And they said, well, he doesn't speak Spanish at home. And I said, but how much could he learn from his peers who are learning it instead of sitting there on a computer? And I, I got nowhere, but it, it's the same kind of thing. How, how, yes, I actually believe that women, especially, I don't know if I want to say especially, I believe women, I'm not going to, I was going to say especially young women, but I don't know if that's true. I think there are certain women who benefit from a group of other women and speaking and engaging without the gaze of men. But in addition, having the conversations with men and men hearing that so okay. that they can understand and go, oh, this is how I can, this is how I can bring my best self, but also be an ally. It's that's the analogy for me is that Spanish class is why wouldn't you let him go in there and absorb what the others are learning? That I think it's very similar. So we're we're not there yet, but there's there's gotta be a solution where we cannot leave our we all three of us have boys on this yes. podcast interview. Yes. Yes. And I don't want to see our boys left behind. Right, right. Right. No, no, that, that is a, it's like, are we sure we're doing this the right way? You know, bring them both together. And then the other, if you bring them both together, it just becomes natural, right? Because they see they're both together in school. They're both learning together a language, a, a skill set. So naturally, as you go into college and into the workforce, it's okay. It's men and, you know, men and women. Um, and then we teach them to speak up for themselves. Yes. And that's one of the solutions there together. Well, it's yeah. interesting. I think these are courses that should be in junior high, in high school, you know, really promoting the presentation classes, financial classes. I mean, I have a few, you know, friends that, um, you know, I went through a, through a divorce, um, you know, just that financial independence um, that is very important, whether male or female. And I've told the same story, you know, to my boys, you need to be and my daughter financially independent so you can take care of yourself, whether a divorce or, you know, whatever reason you depart, but, or if you're just on your own. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, so yeah, I think these are courses that it needs to start at a younger level, you know, um, open to being fairness, respectful, um, presentation classes, confidence classes too. how many people actually have a low level of confidence. And I know that's part of it. I know that's part of, you know, my, um, my shyness in speaking up. Um, I actually am I'm interviewing, and I think I found one, a, um, a leadership coach. So I had a 360 review done at work. And uh, just recently, last Friday, I read the results. And I was like, oh my God, this weekend was, my weekend was terrible because all I was thinking about were the, the, the comments that came back from my boss. And at first I was like defensive about it. But then by Saturday morning, I was like, you know, what am I gonna do to address what was brought to my attention? to make sure that then when I want to get to that next role or next company, those are investments that I make into myself, which is something else that Colette spoke about, right? Investing in yourself. And even tips like that are things that I'm, I'm 54 years old. I'm learning about this now. Like, right. why wasn't that, you know, shared with me when I was 20, 30 at the beginning of my career? Um, you know, so getting a leadership coach, I'm also going to get Stories. I thought about contact, connecting with you on storytelling, but I need storytelling from a PowerPoint presentation. I work with a lot of data and data points. So how do I summarize all that information into a couple of slides? It's not an easy skill. It's not a skill that many have out there. Yeah, um, we do help with that, by the way. But yes, it's okay, an, great. It, it, because <laughs> it's it's visual storytelling, but it's yeah. and and it highlights you're the content. And your slides help you deliver the content. The slides right. are not the content. That's the biggest. That's the biz biggest mistake we see people make is they they defer to the slides that have this wall of text that no one can consume because of how it's arranged. Right. Anyway, I digress. You got thirty minute meeting. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> so JRT, I'm gonna send it over to you for the uh, what on earth? 
What on earth? Oh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. And we have full credit, Maria, to Courtney. Courtney is the one that inspired this question. Yes, I, I heard that uh, interview. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So we want to take the opportunity, you know, for you to think about either something you've witnessed or maybe something that's happened to you that you just go, this is an unbelievable moment. And it just made you say, what on earth? And so I am guessing that you have a what on earth moment that you could share with us. Not as surprising <laughs> as Courtney's, um, especially coming from a female, but, um, but the, I have two actually. So I'll start with the light one. The light one was I was out in Dubai doing an audit and, and I know that the culture there is different. You know, I got to, to see the women all in the full black um, mm -hmm. dress that they have to wear, uh, but I was having, I was working with a, with a, with a customer and we had to have lunch and usually we go out for lunch. But in this case, because there were two males and I was a female and we weren't married, um, we had to order lunch in and then we had to stay in. But they didn't tell me. I just like, okay, I assumed I figured it out on my own because of the country where I was in. So that was one that was like different. Um, and then the other real what on earth was I was talking to a prior manager who was a male, great gentleman. Um, and we talked about, you know, I was complaining about the lack of number of executive women in, in the organization. And um, he, his response was, well, maybe they don't want to have, you know, that, that, that responsibility. Maybe they don't want to move on. I'm like, but why would he say that? Like, what would drive him to say that women don't want to be promoted, that they don't want to move on in their careers? And later on, I realized his, he met his wife in college and she made the decision to stay home to take care of their family, you know, so she gave up on her career. So maybe that's how he is associating that. And that to me is kind of biased because he they makes, makes an assumption that the rest of the women that are married and do have family, that they don't want to move up, you know, in their career. So mm. that was my one on earth kind of. Yeah. What um, on earth? True. Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. And of course that's oh. a choice. Those choices can be made. Everybody should be, not everybody does, but everyone should have the choice to do what they want to do, but to right, assume. But you, can, yeah. but you can leave, do, you know, take care of your family and come back and, and continue growing in your career. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want to uh, move up in your career or, or, or have promotions. And, and really, do we have time or do we need to go? Yeah, no, 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 please okay. keep going. So, so I have one more story that relates to that. And that's when I was much younger working as an internal auditor. Um, it was a... Um, uh, it was an accounting firm that that helped that um, supported other customers. So it was an external internal auditor, uh, outsource. That was the, that's the word. It's mm -hmm, an outsource mm -hmm. internal auditing. So I was with the bank uh, here in Miami, primarily Latins. It was primarily males, and there was one female. She was the head of their finance operations group, and either she she shared the story with me or I overheard where they said to her, you know, they all got promoted, but because she was on maternity leave, she didn't get the promotion. I was like, oh, what does that have anything to do? Like, how long was she on maternity leave for years <laughs> that she couldn't, you know, get the, be considered for the promotion? So those type of things to me are biased. It shouldn't have, we can't naturally, we can't change that. We can't give that responsibility to a man, right? We physically are the ones that bear the children. And now, I guess now you have men that do stay home, which is, I applaud. And I think is great. Um, but you but can't delegate the pregnancy. <laughs> exactly. You're not exactly, delegated. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess you well, could, it, you know, but a surrogate, not, yes, you could. Yeah, Technically, exactly. you could. Yeah. Mm. Well, I just think it makes it, uh, I'm just thinking of a conversation <clears throat> we had this week with um, uh, a client. And in the conversation, she was sharing, to me, it's kind of that one on earth moment. And it, it's in reference to something you just said. And that is a, uh, a man, a dad asking this woman, uh, so a, a man in his 60s having another conversation with a woman <clears throat> in a senior leadership position who was struggling because his son was uh, had a great job, right? Great job. Um, but his wife was going to be in a very senior executive role, had went through intense training, 
and was going to make some, uh, would have a significant salary. And so when the son was making the decision, when they were making the decision, it was best for the son to stay at home, right? It was the best time. And to hear the conversation from the parents saying, do you not understand how this is going to set my son back by him staying home for three to four years? Right. And the response from this client said, (laughs) welcome to what women face every day, every day. This is not a new conversation. And to your point is, you're right. What would that look like if he, and maybe he has a daughter. I don't know. I, it's not, I don't know. But it just, no, or when would you look that, at these, would his response or his reaction yeah. been the same? Exactly. If it yeah. was a, or would it be, well, of course I have a daughter. She should stay home with the children until the children right, are five. Right, right, right. And if it sets her back, I'm sure the husband's okay. an executive and he can make up yeah. the difference. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, so that's, I think those are the things. And I, I think, also to something else you said earlier on in the conversation, I think the importance of, you know, three of us have uh, uh, young men and our, our children, our sons. And I think the importance of, of the system of understanding of how do we train a good guy? Right. Yeah. Because I think that there, I think still our system is designed that if, if they're not surrounded by people that help coach them to be good guys, the system still designs them to be, somebody that could create bias in the workplace Mm -hmm. because that's what they've seen. That's what they've seen. I'm not blaming. It's what they've seen. And so as much of it is, as much as my son understands just because of my profession, the importance of being the good guy, uh, the importance we all have in that role, uh, you know, vice versa, because you're right. I I want my son to have equal opportunity, but I, I also understand the advantage he has going into the room. And yes, no, it's no, real. It's, and it's helping real. them understand that advantage Privilege. and how they lift others up. I mean, yeah. not the least of which is consent. That's a whole other conversation. Oh, whole other but that yeah. consent conversation, but also that allyship conversation, where can you notice your privilege and bring someone else yes. along Yes, that doesn't have the voice that you have and the power that you have? Yeah. Or pick or the right partner. That's oh. why I mentioned I reached out to Colette. I was... So jealous, as I told her, envy all of the different countries that she's been able to work at um, was always my dream. But I didn't have that partner at the time that supported that type of move with the family, you know. Um, so or like this young man that you're they're mentioning, you know, he yeah. is a real partner there. They made a joint decision and said what's really best mm-hmm. for the family, which is what Colette and her, you know, and her husband did as well. Um, so that that's key as well. Um, so I tell my kids, make sure you pick the right partner, you know, male or female, that partner from an aspect that you're really working together and that you're making, you're looking at decisions together, not just from, from one side. So, yeah. But I think that's so important. I appreciate you bringing that up. We haven't brought that up in a long time, but I, you know, for someone like me that I can own the fact that I, I, I chose to marry a man that's, um, older than myself. We have a, a, an age difference. And my mom always said, you'll never get married. You'll never, Jenny, that's impossible. But anyway, the moral of the story is, is that no one can handle you girlfriend. (laughs) But it was the exact point of is my career was, I, at a younger age, my career was very important to me. And I would have struggled with, you know, how do you find that balance? And I'm not saying this is right. And my point in this podcast for, it worked for you women right. to go order old marry older men no, my point no. in the story was it was important to me for him to verbalize to me no matter what his age is i want you to have your career go what is the sacrifice i need to make and again yeah. th- i'm just bringing that up i'm jen that's not in the vault that's not in the bank i'm just sharing it as it is not in the vault it's in the bank yeah <laughs> same the whole reason i left florida well there's many reasons i left florida but but my husband's always been very supportive of yeah. the choices that that we make together about my career and what happens with that so yeah it's important it's an important thing well well wow this has been amazing jen and you have shared many important pieces of information. And I think you brought in something very important to us earlier when we, before we started this call was, is exactly what Jen's showing is well, that we want to, sh- oh, hang on. Hang <laughs> we on. want to be able to share getting there. just like you reached out to Colette, one of our previous podcasts, 
if something really resonates with you in this um, conversation today, to be able to reach out to Maria via LinkedIn. And on the screen here, Maria, last name, B-O-R-G-E-S, for those that maybe just be listening. Gorgeous. Um, did I say it right? Yes, Gorgeous. yes, you did. Yes. Um, and to be able to connect. It's all about connecting powerful leaders with other powerful leaders. Yeah, and that working, that was one thing that was, what I had one female uh, co-worker said to me, your head's always down, just working, working. You need to grow your network. You need to connect. And it's something that I think women don't naturally do. We're yeah. just, you know, doing our work, finishing what we need to do, and then getting home to do our next job. Um, it is that connection, uh, that networking. So, yeah, yeah. So happy to yeah. connect with anyone. Oh, good. So good to hear it. Well, we're going to send you back to the green room, Maria. Please stay there for a moment if you can yes. so that we can debrief with you. And that's when the mics go off and all the great stuff comes out. We'll have to figure that out, JRT. Yes. But thank you so much for okay. meeting with us today, Maria. No, and thank you for the opportunity to both of you. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Thank very you. Fun. Oh, I cut her off on the bye. <laughs> I'm not good with these tools, JRT. Getting a little fast on the clicks here. <sighs> Too clicky. So, yeah. Well, I'm. I want to say that I'm never. I want to. I don't want to be surprised. But I think in for every conversation is what is the reason for what we do. What we do every day, and the reason for the podcast is is because everybody has a different story, and how we hear those stories from other women has a major impact on our life no matter what phase of the career we're in. And I really appreciated her sharing some of those stories, the reality that bias does take place in the workplace and how she handled some of those moments. Yeah, so good to hear those stories. Important to share them so that others can learn from them. I'm Jen Valenga and she's JRT and we are the co-founders of Voice First World and the co-hosts of the Speak With Presence podcast. You've been listening to that and watching. For those of you who've been watching live, thank you so much. And for those who watch the replay to you as well, we are a communication coaching company. We help you speak with presence without being perfect so that you can show up as the powerful leader you are in your workplace and all your spheres of influence. We get amazing re results for our clients. We have recently had two women who've been in their jobs for over 20 years move on to much bigger positions with much bigger salaries salaries, all because they understood their stories, their career stories, their personal stories, and how that fits into their future careers. So if you want to know how to speak with presence without being perfect, you can reach out to us at voiceforceworld.com forward slash apply. JRT, anything else for you? No, we will be back next week with another interview and uh, we will be doing some interviews from the road in the near future. We're yes. taking that podcast equipment, loading it up in the old front wheel drive slave and headed out. <laughs> heading <laughs> out. Some, no experiences. Rolling out to Oklahoma <laughs> tomorrow. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week. Bye JRT. Bye-bye. Oh wait, we got a comment. Oh, great interview. Good job, Jen. Good job, Maria. Good job catching that right before we say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for the appreciation. We appreciate you as well. All right. Really bye -bye. checking out. Bye-bye. <laughs>